Alright, in the first part of the review, I'm going to be taking the first couple problems and going from an exponent to a log or a log to an exponent. So remember, we do the loop. We start with the base, we loop towards, but we go around the equal sign and end with the final part. So since this is an exponent problem, I'll be looping it into a log. So it goes 3 of 81 equals 4. So log 3 of 81 equals 4. This one's a log problem, so I'm going to be looping it into an exponent. 7 to the second power equals 49. Uh, the next one, I'm going to loop it from an exponent into a log. So log with a base of e is just ln. So it goes log base e of 18 equals the 4x. And the last one, I have a log problem, so remember there's a base of e. So it's going to go e to this power equals 7. Okay, the next part, I will be simplifying or evaluating. So there are some shortcuts to some of these, otherwise, when in doubt, do the equal sign and the question mark. Um, the shortcut here is, when you take the log of 1, it doesn't matter the base, you're always going to get 0. But if you don't see it, 4 to the what power gives you 1, well then your answer is 0. On this one, when the base of the log and the base of the exponent are the same, they can cancel each other out. Otherwise, again, you can do this. Um, it's a log problem, so I'd loop it into an exponent, so 3 to the what power gives me this. And to make the question mark equal the right side, it'd be 2x. But again, that shortcut says that if these are the same, you can cancel them out, and what you're left with is your answer. So that's the shortcut here, um, and this is, this is, it's very hard to see, that's a 0.5. But this base of e and this log having a base of e, just simplify and I get 0.5x. They cancel out. And then the same thing happens here. This has a little base of 10. So this base of 10 and this base of 10, what I'm left with is 5, and that's my answer. So I use the shortcut on those. Um, change base formula. So some of you have this option on your calculator when you push the math button. Um, to do that, I still expect you to write out what the change base formula is on the test. So I do want to see this. Um, but from there, you're welcome to go to your calculator. Again, you push the math button. And if you scroll up or down to the letter A, then you can put the 5 and the 20. I'm sorry, it wasn't a 5. It was a 2 and a 10 in and get your answer. Otherwise, the rest of us need to do log of the top number, close your parentheses, log of 2, and you get the same answer. And I'm going to have us go to the nearest hundred, so 3.32. Whoops. So for this one, um, you can also use the LN button, so LN9 of LN7. So again, you can do the math button, otherwise, let me clear that out, do LN. 9, close it, divided by ln um, 7, close your parentheses, and you get 1.13. And on this one, again, you can set up with log or ln, doesn't matter. And when you are done typing that into your calculator, you get 1.19. All right, let's move on to the next part. We are expanding or condensing. So expanding or condensing, what I need to do is take any multiplication, turn it into addition. Division turns into subtraction. And exponents turn into multiplication. And then they work going backwards the other way. So if, when I'm expanding or condensing, this is one log, so I want to expand it out. So I'll be going from multiplication to addition. I'll be working this way. So 12 times x to the fifth divided by y becomes 12 plus x to the fifth minus y. And sorry, that was a mistake from up there, so I'll just write my answer below. So each of these terms is going to get the log. So it'll be ln with the 12 plus ln with the x, and instead of the 5 going here, it moves to the front of its log, and then minus ln of y. So ignore the 3. Um, next one, it's one log, so I want to go to several logs. So it's 10 times x cubed times y, which turns into addition. And then each of these three terms gets that log. So log 
10 plus log of x, and the 3 doesn't go here, it moves to the th front, and log of y. And on this one, again, expanding, so it's 3 times y divided by 4, and then the x to the 5th is being divided, so I want to write that um, as division. I know it's multiplying to the 4, but it's being divided in the overall log, so this turns into addition, subtraction, and another subtraction. And now I can expand it, so it's going to be, I'm going to write small ln of 3 plus ln of y minus ln of 4 minus the ln of the x, and then the 5 goes to the front. And that one's been expanded. The next set, these are all condensing because I've got several logs, so I want to go to one log. So where I do the exponent moving to the front, that's going to be the first thing. So this multiplying is going to go back as the exponent. And then instead of 4 plus um, 6, or I'm sorry, 4 cubed, I want to look at it as 4 times. And 4 cubed, you guys, that's just 64. So if you actually take 64 and multiply it on your calculator, uh, you get 384, and then we can bring that log back. So that's been condensed down. So on this one, um, I want to move this back as an exponent, and then 12 minus x squared minus y becomes 12 divided by, and another divided. And then anything divided goes in the denominator. So the 12 will stay in the numerator, but the x squared and y will go in the denominator, and then I'll bring that log back. And there's the answer for this one. And the final one, again, move any multiplication back as an exponent. And then x squared plus 2 to the 5th minus 8. Well, 2 to the 5th is 32, so it's x squared times 32 divided by 8. That's just 4, so when I'm done, I have 4x squared. I'll bring that natural log back, and that one has been condensed down. And that's the first page. All right, for the graphing part, you might want to have your note card out. Um, I made a quick one for this, for the logs. So maybe pause it. You can make your own note card real quick if you want something to refer back to. But let's talk about um, the similarities. So first, you know, the job of B, whether it's growth or an exponent or a log, is B is going to tell you if it's growth or decay. Okay, if it's bigger than 1, it's growth. If it's smaller than 1, it's decay. Um, in our exponent 1, A was our y-intercept. It tells you, does it stretch, does it compress, it flips. For the problems that are going to be on the test, it's also going to be the intercept, but it's going to be the x-intercept. Um, but it will tell you, does it stretch, compress, or flip. Um, H, H is always contained. Here it's contained in the exponent. It's what makes it equal. You take the opposite, but it's your left-right number. In logs, it's also contained in parentheses. It's your left-right, what makes it equal, or the z uh, the opposite, but in this one it's also your wall. So you're going to have a horizontal wall. And then k, k is as is, free, it's not contained, it's your up-down number. In this one it's your um, horizontal wall, and I'm sorry I said horizontal down here, it's a vertical wall. And then here k is still up-down, as is, etc. So how do you remember the difference between the walls? Well this one has a vertical wall so the wall is going to be going like this, and the way I remember is because an L goes like that. So that's the best I can give you as a trick for that one. Anyway, so the first two I'm going to be using this note card. And I've already started a little bit. These are all the different things I need for you to do, so my I wasn't doing a very good, good job writing. On the test, you're going to be expected to describe the transformation in order. Um, make your t-chart, leave out H and K. You need to graph your parent function without h and k. You need to draw on your asymptote, your wall, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Don't forget to graph your transformed function. Those are the ones I want you to connect in describing the domain and range. So an exponent, b, b is 3. Um, so my parent function is 3 to the x. It's going to be growth. My y-intercept is 1. And then I wrote this wrong. Uh, my transformation, it's going to go left too. So where's the wall? The wall here is k. And since there is no k, there is no up-down number, that's going to be 0 for my wall. So here's my wall. I'm going to make my t-chart. Since it's growth besides 0 and my free point, I'll use 1 and 2. 
So 3 to the first, 3 to the second, graph those really fast. And then I'm going to take all those points, they're going to go left 2. And then you can graph your shape. So on this one, um, this is going to be decay because B is a fourth, A is two. Um, my transformation, I will be going left two and down five. I'll put negatives here. That down negative five is also my wall here, down negative five. Oops. Um, I do not need the second t-chart on exponents. So when I make my t-chart, leave out h and k. Use this, use the 2, but leave out the plus 2 minus 5. Since it's decay besides 0 on my free point, I'll be using negative 1 and negative 2. So when I take 1 fourth to the negative first power, remember that just turns it into 4, and then I'll be taking that 4 times this 2 to get 8. And then a negative 2 power will also flip it, but that will be 4 squared, which is 16, and 16 times that 2 gives me 32. So they're not all going to fit. Here's 0, 2, negative 1, 8. But now all the points are going to go left 2 and down 5. And then decay. Decay looks like decay whether it's an exponential or a log function. This is decay. Okay, so that's review. In the new parts, here's my new card. Again, you can make one too, just pause it and do that. Um, I'll be using both T charts. Okay, so first problem is this growth or decay? Well, B is 2, so that's growth. Growth in a log function looks like this, though. That's the one that looks different. Um, my transformation, remember, H is in something. It's in parentheses. I don't see anything in parentheses, so there is no left or right. And my left right number is my wall. It's going to be going this way this time. And my plus 1 is my up-down number, so I'll be going up 1. So here's my wall at 0. Remember, L goes like this. This is how your wall should go. And when I make my t-chart, first I'll start with the inverse of this. So leave out h and k. So this is the original function. I switch x and y around. And then I do the loop to an exponent. 2 to the x power equals y. So 2 to the x power equals y. This is going to be my first t-chart. Growth is still 0, 1, and 2. My free point. Um, put 0 on there, 2 to the 0 power is 1, 1, 2 to the first power is 2, and I get 4. Now, these are the points for the exponent. I need the points for the log, so that's where I'm using this. The points just switch. So these are the points for the inverse. If I just inverse them back, that's the points of the original one. So I'll graph 1, 0, 2, 1, and 4, 2. And then they're all just going to move up one. And then the shape is a lowercase r. And I'm going to go back and do the domain and the range at the end of these problems. I, I didn't forget about it. All right, this one. Um, so is this growth or decay? Well, b is a third. It's decay. Decay still looks like decay. Um, let's go for our transformation. So I'll be going left one. That's my wall. I'll be going up 2, and I'm sorry, there wasn't a lot of room here. I should space this out better. And now I'll make my t-chart, so I'm going to find the inverse. I'll do that over here, so there's y. Leave out the plus 1 and plus 2. So I'm going to switch x and y around. And now it goes 1 third to the x power equals y. So that's my inverse. That's what I'll be using in my first t-chart, one-third to the x power. So with decay comes negative 1 and negative 2. Again, anything to a 0 power is 1. A third to negative first power flips the one-third over and makes it 3 to the first power. And the negative for negative 2 flips it over and makes it 3 squared, and I get 9. And those points help me find the original uh, Whoops without h and k. So if I just switch these around, 
those are the points that work here. So I'll graph 1, 0, um, 3, negative 1, and 9, negative 2. And now everything's going to go left 1 and up 2. And I got my shape. Oh, that wasn't very good. Sorry. All right, it's not supposed to be crossing the wall. Um, and the last one. So what is this base? This base is E. So that makes this grow. Whoops, sorry, growth, which looks like this. Um, my transformations inside the parentheses, I'll be going left 2. That's a negative 2. That's my wall. And I'll make my t-chart. So first I'm going to find the inverse. So drop the plus 2. I will put the E version of it. Switch X and Y around. And now I'll do the inverse. E to the X power equals Y. So that's what my first t-chart is going to be using. E to the X. Remember, leave out the H and K. So with growth, 0 and anything to a 0 power is 1. The first power, that this is 2.7, so 2.7 to the first power is 2.7. And then to the second power, I get, I think it's, let me just double check, 7.4. And then these points inversed are this, the natural log of x. So I'll graph these, um, 1, 0... Mm, about there, and 7.4, about there. And now everything is going to go left 2, and then I'll do my growth shape. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the domain and the range. So. One thing we had written in our notes, we'll start with the log functions, is that in the these, the range is always the same. It's the domain that's going to be affected by your wall because it can only go left so far or right so far. So if we start talking about this, on this one, as x gets bigger, the y's are getting bigger, so infinity and infinity. And here, the x's are going to get smaller, but they're going to stop at this wall of negative 2. But the y's are still going down at negative 2. So when you do your domain, it goes, or range, smaller to bigger, so negative 2 to infinity with parentheses, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. So let's take a look at this one. So again, um, on this side, not a very good graph, x's are getting bigger and the y's are getting smaller, slowly, but they are getting smaller and they're going to keep getting smaller. On this side, as it moves over, x is going to get smaller, but it's going to hit that wall of negative 1 but the y's are getting bigger. So when I do my domain here, my domain will be negative 1 to infinity, smaller on the left, bigger on the right, and then my um, range. I know this is on the left and this is on the right, but this is the smaller amount, and then it goes infinity. Um, for this one, domain and range. So on this side, x's are getting bigger, so are the y's, so they're both infinity. On this one, the x's are going to get smaller until they hit that wall of 0, but the y's are going down, so they're getting smaller. So my domain is from 0 to infinity, 0 smaller than infinity, so it goes on the left, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. All right, so the exponent problems are a little different. Here, you know, the x's are getting bigger slowly, but they're getting bigger, and the y's are getting bigger, so infinity and infinity. But here, the x's are getting smaller, okay? But the y's are going to stop at this wall of 0. So when I do the domain and range here, my domain this time is negative infinity to infinity, just the opposite or the inverse of what we just talked about with the log functions. And the range, you know, the range is affected by the wall, so 0 to infinity. Um, on this one, so on the left side, as x is getting smaller, and it's slowly getting smaller, but it's getting smaller, there's nothing stopping it. The y's are getting bigger. On this side, the x's keep getting bigger, but the y's are going to stop. They can't get any further past negative 5. So when I do the domain here, negative infinity to infinity, 
And here, I know infinity is on the left, and this is on the right, so that's how we want to write it. But negative 5 is the smaller amount. It goes first, and then infinity. And they're always parentheses. So on the test, you know, you're just going to have the logs. So the main thing to remember on the logs is the range is always the same. Okay? It's always negative infinity to infinity. But your wall is going to stop your x's, and your wall comes from your left-right numbers. So this affected my wall. This didn't have a wall. It, well, it does, but it wasn't listed. It's zero. And then this one, this one had a wall. Okay? And that's that video.